He just but always he's so supportive and hey, I like these flowers, I like how the yard looks, oh he changed that. As the news of Jeff's passing became known, I had many people come to me and say that they were shocked because everything happened so quickly. Then they would share a memory they had of him, and it quickly became clear that Jeff knew a lot of people and that they all had very positive things to say about him. As I met with Barb, we talked about his time serving in the Air Force. Jeff served during the Vietnam era. He went overseas to England where I learned he met Barb. As Barb said, I was his souvenir from England. <laughs> I'd say after 56 years of knowing one another, it worked. He kept you. Um, I, I would say that worked because the two of you shared 56 years together. Barb said when, the, when they got married, they went to the Justice of the Peace, but because she needed the proper paperwork to come back and live here with Jeff, that it could take months until they were actually able to live together. Well, Jeff made a few calls to the senator, and in four days, the paperwork was complete. Barb could come and join him here. Jeff worked for a variety of warehouses throughout his career. He worked for Hall Trucking, Maury Sporting Goods, and the most recent was MWI Veterinary Supply. Dave and Barb said he performed several different jobs throughout the warehouse, but mainly in the shipping and receiving, and he did this for the entirety of his career. Working in a warehouse is hard work. The physical demands alone can be incredibly difficult. Barb mentioned that he would ride the Port Bill thread and try to avoid running over people or hitting things, which I'm sure everyone appreciated. The fact that Jeff spent his career in this line of work shows that he was no stranger to hard work, which no doubt carried over from his time in the military. When Jeff wasn't working, Barb said he could be found at Bell's Meat Market, where he would help during deer season. She said that when she visited him there, she'd walk in, and there would be deer or parts of deer everywhere. This was not her cup of tea, and I don't think she could wait to get out of there, but she was always there, and Jeff was always there smiling because he just loved being around people and helping them out. Jeff also loved the outdoors and enjoyed hunting. Anyone who knew Jeff knew that he was a die-hard 49ers fan. Barb said that she was sad Jeff couldn't watch the game on December 3rd because the Eagles and the 49ers um, played and the 49ers beat the Eagles 42-19. to I don't know anything about football, but I assume that's a significant win. Since the game, the 49ers went on to claim victories against the Seahawks and the Cardinals. I'm going to say that Jeff probably had something to do with this, and I'm sure he's cheering them on. We will see how the game on Christmas goes against the Ravens, because that would be a great Christmas gift to Jeff if they could win that on Christmas Day. It was clear that Jeff was a people person. As I was writing a service, I decided to read through some of the comments that people left on his memorial page. One of the tributes was from his cousin Linda, and I thought it was a great example just to describe Jeff. And it was, he was a bit mischievous and had a droll sense of humor. He was always a great storyteller like his dad and his grandfather. He and Barb were perfect partners. Now the follow-up response is what I thought was funnier, and that was from Carol, who said, a bit mischievous, how about very? So, she did not hold back there. Another tribute was from Rudders on Vine Street, and before I read what they had to say, I don't believe I ever saw a gas station get together and put a post on somebody's memorial page, so Jeff must have had an impact on them. They said that we at Rudders on Vine Street are going to miss him. He was always there in the morning for his paper for his wife and two scratch-off tickets for the road. They said he was a great guy to talk to and they wished prayers to his family. As I read through the comments, I could see that Jeff touched many people's lives and that he will definitely be missed. Now, I want to read a poem that many have turned to to find comfort during difficult times. It's, it's, don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I'm following the path God laid for me. I took his hand, and when I heard him call, I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work, or play. Tasks left undone must stay that way. I found that peace at the close of day. If my parting has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss, I guess these things I too will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow, I wish for you the sunshine of tomorrow. 
My life's been full, I've savored much, good friends, good times, my loved ones touch. If my time seemed all too brief, don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your heart, rejoice with me, God wanted me now, he set me free. I thought this poem was really appropriate because Barb said that Jeff just wanted everything to be simple and that he didn't want anyone mourning, that he wanted them to remember him, which doesn't really surprise me because Jeff just seemed like the kind of guy that that's just what he wanted. He just wanted everyone to be happy and just to remember him. Jeff spent a lot of time in the hospital recently, which is never easy for the patient or their family. Barb would visit him and things didn't seem to be getting better. On December 7th, Jeff finally was free from any sickness and the struggles he was going through. I am sure that he would tell everyone in this room that he doesn't want anyone sitting around mourning about his loss, but to rather celebrate, to go on with their lives, and to know that he is still with you. Jeff's passing has left a void in many people's lives. He was a husband, a brother, a son, an uncle, and a friend to many. While we are all saddened by the loss of a great man, we must remember that Jeff is now at peace. Just because someone isn't physically here with us doesn't mean that they aren't with us in memories and in thoughts. I'm sure all of you could share countless stories and memories, whether appropriate or not, um, that you shared with Jeff. I always encourage people to share these with a the family because there might be a story they don't know about, so Barb, maybe you'll learn something. <laughs> As more and more time goes by, life will return to what I call a new normal. This doesn't mean that you won't miss Jeff, and this doesn't mean that you shouldn't feel emotions. It means that you are continuing to live your life like Jeff would want. It is not uncommon to have days where a memory, a sin, just something you pick up, reminds you of him and you'll be hit with an excess of emotion. This is okay and is completely normal. This just shows that you love him and that he clearly had an impact in your life. Jeff is in a far better place, one where there is no illness, sadness, or negativity. Well, this is hard for the people who he left behind. Know he will always live on with you. At this time, I'm going to turn the mic over and we're going to do the flag presentation. So thank you for allowing me to get to celebrate Jeff's life and to give me this opportunity. He'll definitely be missed. is presented by the United States government and its citizens in grateful recognition of Jeff's service to his country. Thank you. I'd like to remind or invite everyone here to join with the family at Stoverdale United Methodist Church for a time of refreshments and remembrances. And this concludes our services. May we go in peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.